quick walkthrough of a few key features of Artifactory. Let's go. Artifactory is a universal binary repository manager. This means that it can be used to manage your build artifacts, compiled binaries, information about your builds, Docker images, Helm charts, whatever, regardless of the technologies you're using. So if you're using Python or JavaScript or C Sharp and Ruby, it doesn't matter. Artifactory supports 27 different package types explicitly, as well as a generic repository type for everything else. You get a single source of truth for all of your commercial and open source binaries, artifacts, and dependencies. Artifactory allows you to tightly control who has access to what within your platform. Let's take a look at how you can do that with users and groups. Click the gear icon in the left-hand navigation panel to go to the administration module. From there, click identity and access, and then users. You can see here that I've already got a few users, including one I've created called demo user. To create your own user, click the new user button in the upper right hand corner. Our demo user is fairly privileged with the ability to manage our policies, watches and reports, but without the ability to administer the platform itself. We can also update its password here if we want and assign it to a group if any exist. We can also see if it has any permissions. Go ahead and save your user if you're creating one along with me and look back under the identity and access menu on the left and click on groups. I already have a demo group set up and here in green, you can see that our demo user is already a member of it. I'm in this group too, and I don't really need to be anymore because I'm an administrator. So click on a user to remove it and click on the arrow to the left and that takes it back out of the group. Go ahead and save. And we're done. Let's talk about repositories in JFrog Artifactory. Repositories are broken up into three different categories, local, remote, and virtual. Local repositories are what they sound like, repositories for your code that exists locally on your machine. Remote repositories are also fairly self-explanatory. They contain remote code, like your project's dependencies. This functions sort of like a cache, so that after the first download, your project pulls its dependencies from the associated remote repository rather than from NPM or PyPy. Virtual repositories are a little bit different. They create a kind of envelope around the local and remote repositories for your project. And this is what you'll be interacting with most frequently. The easiest way to create new repositories when you're getting started is to let Artifactory do it for you. Click on your username in the upper right hand corner, then select quick setup and select the package type you want. I will go with Debian. Artifactory does the setup for you, so you don't have to worry about it. Back in the application module under Artifactory and Artifacts, you'll see that I already have quite a few repositories set up. I'll be using Docker to show you how, to, how else Artifactory helps you get started quickly. If you click on a repository, in my case, it's the virtual repository for Docker, you'll find a set me up button in the upper right hand corner of the page. Go ahead and click that. Enter your password here and it will pre-populate everything for you. So you already have the commands you need to build, tag, and then push a Docker container to Artifactory, as well as the command you need to resolve it if you want. But if we want our demo user to be able to access these Docker repositories, that's possible to control through the use of permissions. Back in the administration module, under identity and access again, click on permissions. I've already created one here called Docker. You can see here that it includes access to two repositories. That's its scope, Docker local and Docker remote. And then you define which users have access to it and what their level of control is. I've added my demo user here and right now it's able to read, annotate, deploy, delete, and manage X-ray metadata. 
I think that's a little bit too much control. So we're going to we're going to tone this down a little. We'll remove the ability for it to delete or overwrite. And we'll also remove the ability to deploy and annotate. So the only thing this user can now do is read and manage X-ray metadata. Saved. All good. For a practical step-by-step -step guide to even more things you can do within the JFrog platform, including vulnerability detection and building a CI-CD pipeline, two things I didn't even mention in this video, check out our quick start guide. For an even deeper dive, please make sure to read through our very large technical documentation, check out some of our webinars, and we even have a few tutorials for you to look at. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.